Lake Forest Podcast is supported by viewers, listeners, and businesses just like you. Looking for the best pool supplies? Look no further than Doheny's Pool Supplies. With a history dating back to 1967, this family-owned business offers everything families need to keep their pools clean and sparkling from chemicals to equipment. Plus, customers enjoy free shipping on all orders. Visit Doheny's Pool Supplies today at doheny.com, D-O-H-E-N-Y dot com to learn more. Forest Bluff Real Estate Team serves Illinois, Wisconsin, Lake Forest, and Lake Bluff. John Joseph Fidus, Laura Lee Van Fleet, and of course, Michelle Parnell. Get a free market analysis now at forestbluffrealestate.com. For the best cannabis in the world, look no further than Iliad Epic Grow. Owned by Lake Bluff's own Rich Ruzich, they are a cannabis cultivation center focusing on hard-to-find small batch products that will delight both the occasional user and Ganjier. When visiting Michigan, ask for it by name, Epic Products, Exceptional Process. For more information, email info at iliadgrow.com. Havy Communications has been helping first responders arrive safely since 1983. It's owned by Lake Forest owned Mike Havy. Check them out at havycommunications.com. We'd also like to say we're thankful for our Patreon supporters. Matt A, Elizabeth C, Costa, Lance, Otto, RDM, John C, and Helen. Shout out to the Lake Forest Breakfast Group, Broad Stop and Captain Mike's in Kenosha, the Greentown Tavern, and the Frolic Lounge in Waukegan. All right, Pete, you're on the road. I'm on the road. The show must go on. Well, Lake Bluff got named one of the best beaches in the country. I think it got, did it get ranked over uh, Forest Park it was, it, it was, It was a weird thing. It was something about hidden beaches. It wasn't, the, the, okay. Lake, the Lake Bluff Beach is nowhere near as nice as the Lake Forest Beach. It's not even remotely yeah. uh, close. Um, I, 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 I was kind of surprised by that, although... I, and I don't know what's so hidden about it. It's you know, yeah, not all well hidden. So it's uh, no. I, I'm not too sure what was going on there. I did read the article about it, and it, you know, just walked away puzzled by why is that here. Um, it, it, we did win. Lake Bluff did win a couple of years ago uh, uh, a survey uh, of the ten most beautiful uh, seaside uh, villages. Yeah, which everyone was quite uh, amused by, considering that we're about a thousand miles from the sea. <laughs> so uh, Joe's going to come on and talk about Lake Forest 101, what he learned. Yeah, and, I'd, like uh, hear, I'd like to hear about that. I think that uh, sounded like a good idea. And I'm going to address the cancel culture a little bit, so I get the rest of these boys back. Um, the stuff that I've asked is. Uh, Hey, City of Lake Forest. Hey, uh, Lake Forest High School. Uh, what? Please send me all communications regarding uh, the Lake Forest podcast. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, we'll see what we get on that. We'll get oh well, on that. well, you know, it's uh, they play the game of well, that's too broad a scope. I'm like, okay, then how about this? Let's narrow it down to Jason Wisha. <laughs> just any <laughs> uh because he he has told people not to come on the show and he, he's told the city employees not to come on the show well if he won't come on and the city employees won't come on the elected officials won't come on it gives the impression of you know we're trying to hide something and i like i like jason yeah i like jason. you know um but i don't like that like what is that? Like, we're getting the treasurer, and she screwed up, or it's a she, right? I forget. Yes, Holly Kim. Yeah, she, yeah, Holly. Yeah, she screwed up, and she's going to come on mm-hmm. and talk yeah. about it. Here's, uh, all right, here's Joe. Look at you. What up, Paya? Look at you, man. Look at this. I, I think you're, you, you better, dude, you got to pull over when you're doing a, um, a podcast. Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about, officer. Uh, attorney Lester, uh, no, seriously, like there was oh, yeah. a township official that got in trouble for this during the pandemic. She did a Zoom meeting in her car. I kind of agree with Joe here. This this may not be the best idea. You know, it's not going to be my last 
worst idea either. You can pull, can't you just pull over for an hour or you are time? I, 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 I'm like 10 minutes away where I, where, where I got to be. So All right. I believe this is, this is a hands-free operation. Is it not? I just, I, I believe there is a law that says yeah. you cannot conduct a video meeting in a moving vehicle. Got this it. came, so this came up in Northfield Township with the township supervisor was late for a Zoom meeting when they were when everybody was meeting on Zoom during the pandemic. So she was late for the Zoom meeting and she was driving and it made like NBC five. So so Joe, talk to me about Lake Forest one on one, man. What'd you learn? Was uh, Kathy Zerniak there? Kathy Zerniak, as always, was the host with the most. She, uh, we went, we went on a bus tour all around the city, seeing all the different development areas, you know, uh, started out at the office out by, uh, next to Hallis Hall. Um, it went, you know, every part of town you can think of with development, some subdivisions I didn't even know existed because I'm, I'm fairly new to town, but, um, on the South end, like towards Highland park and some stuff off of old mill, old Elm road, uh, and some new subdivisions there. Um, do they have any talk about, and they stop to have any talk about the area, um, that is, uh, say, what's it, uh, good, Conway, uh, farms, uh, yeah, we went through it area. There's a whole development that is, uh, being, uh, well, uh, a property that was marketed and they had a, um, a potential, uh, grocery store, uh, supermarket that was interested a couple of years ago, but then uh, that fell through, but I think that's still for sale. Yeah, we went through that. We went through, um, a uh, number of other areas. Um, did uh, did they sh she tell you what Knollwood was? <laughs> Knollwood's not part of Lake Forest, so we we <laughs> we stopped at the city line, sir. No one um, knows what Knollwood is. <laughs> I don't think Knollwood knows what Knollwood. No, is. Knollwood does not know what Knollwood is. No. <laughs> Let's, we're gonna start Wait, the Knollwood no podcast one time. Hold on, we did a podcast that talked about Knollwood. I thought it was part of uh, Lake Forest. Uh, no, like, no, no, it is uh, unincorporated area that is between Lake Forest, Lake Bluff, Green Oaks, and North Chicago. Okay. Um, All right, fair enough. Well, I guess that question could have come up, Joe. But well, you know, a, a, a very, a very interesting thing came up. We went by the infamous um, property on Westminster, where um, our friend Scoo Walker got verbally assaulted a few months back. Oh. When he, uh, and, you know, a number of people had questions and stuff. And we, you know, uh, looked at the property and I didn't know there's a, again, I'm new to this and there's a lot of litigation back and forth, but um, there's a, uh, there's a single family residential home that will buffer that property to the fan, to the house next door that where uh, Sku got um, assaulted uh, or the, well, occupants of assaulted Sku verbally assaulted him and his wife and his dog when they were out walking. Yeah, the dog is pushing things, you know. Yeah, really. I mean, where's the dog? <laughs> you can't yell at Cooper. But they, um, you know, so, I mean, and Kathy made a very interesting point. She said, look, you know, Lake Forest isn't a, isn't a museum. Okay, we have a lot of great history here. Um, we've preserved a lot of great stuff. But you can't freeze the city in time. You know, I, I really think yeah. if if Market Square was being proposed today, the same people that are block the box and transparency and supported Prue Beidler in the election, they'd be opposing yeah. Market Square. I mean, that was a radical project for its day. And they, they that, was the first, that was the first shopping center yeah. in, uh, in the country. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it, yes. I bet you there'd be people. Oh, we don't want this. We don't want a shopping center in our town. And they they actually moved buildings um, to other parts of yes. of the of downtown or CBD, whatever you want to call it, uh, to 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 build Market Square. So I can you know, can you imagine that project today? But another point she made it was very interesting was, and again, she only administers the the. Uh, the policies that the city council decides. The city council ultimately makes decisions. Right. Um, but she did caution that, you know, when you have development, and we actually on the tour later on, we went through an area near Waukegan Road, uh, near the train station, that was a court ordered development. You know, so there was apparently was some lawsuits back and forth. 
and ultimately the court ruled the development. Um, and you got to really, you know, nothing against the people that live there or anything, but it's a really bad development. I mean, it doesn't fit any standards of the city. It doesn't look like Lake Forest. It do, the streets are really narrow. The homes aren't that, the property values are probably low compared to most of Lake Forest. Um, again, nothing wrong with people living there and everything, but it's really when the city lost control because they they let a court decide. And so it's probably better, you know, we have all these lawsuits with development. Um, probably better to let the city be involved in the development to at least bring it to some standards rather than just saying, no, we're not going to have any development. And then letting it, having a court come in and say, yeah, you're going to build this development as they want. The people that are bitching about this, just a, a hypothetically, okay, they, they buy a property that is, that is not surrounded by whatever. And as development happens, things change. And when things change, it affects their, I don't know, they're used to looking at their the area that they live in a certain way. And when it affects them, they bitch and complain and then they sue. Is that right? Like, like if you move next to a school, can you really get pissed because they're trying to put tennis courts in? Well, it's like people that moved uh, you know? near Hallis Hall. It's like, yeah, they play football there. You, you right. move next to the Bears training center. Be, be, be glad you got one of 30 NFL training sites in the country in your backyard. That's that's a that's a cool thing, in my opinion, to have. Don't complain that the Bears are playing loud music every every once in a while. Well, the, the reason I bring it up is it's it's not so much they care about the historical aspect of it is it's a selfish aspect that it's affecting their their uh, living arrangement. Sure, everybody wants to be the last one to move into the to the to the city. They want their development wants to be the last one, and they don't. Oh, that's it. No more. Well, I, I will disagree with both of you on this. Uh, yeah. Okay. That uh, one thing, one problem that there has been uh, in our area is that when they do zoning changes, when they change uses of property, uh, they need to be careful that the uses are are harmonious and compatible. Uh, and will not be jarring in the very way that you just described, Joe. Uh, and that has been a a, a problem around uh, in this area. Um, we need to have we, we so you don't provoke the neighbors, so that you don't create uh, fights. They do need, and the city has every right in the world to make sure that zoning is harmonious and compatible with the existing areas. You don't put in the classic sense. Uh, a, a iron smelting plant uh, next to a, uh, a single family home. No. Yeah. And you, you do need to, you do need to be careful about that. And that has been the problem you just described uh, this one area that looks radically different. Well, that's, that's bad land use. That's bad planning. Uh, and yeah, you can blame it on yeah, the Give court. me a for instance, right? Or it may well have been some help in that. Uh, but and where I, and is iron that? Where is it kind of going about? way out there. Uh, Give Joe, me where, an where was that? Of where... It was Mar Mara. I wish I had it in front of me. I'll look it up, and we'll have Pete put it up. Um, okay, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I'm, just, I'm not familiar yeah, with that. What I'm uh, saying, it's, yeah. near, it's just it's near that it's it's near that train station. You mean not, not the Lake downtown Forest? train station, but the West Lake Forest train West station. Forest. You turn off on a side street, and there's this little like. It starts with like Mar. M A R, and then it's got is that like the a affordable housing. Not Mar a Lago. But that's that's yeah, President no, Trump's home. Mar a Lago yeah. is not affordable but, housing. No. <laughs> <laughs> this is and look, like I said, I'm not casting aspersions on the neighborhood or the people that live there. I'm sure it's all fine people and everything, but it's just you look at it like, man, I, you could barely the bus we were in could barely get through. So imagine a garbage truck or a fire engine. I mean, it was just it's crazy. Exactly what you're talking about there. Uh, much less why the, the court would, it would be very strange for the court uh, to order creation of streets that are smaller than uh, than what the building code requires. I think there is, there's this delicate balance here. Look, no one wants Lake Forest to become uh, Schaumburg or some community that's all new. Of course, Schaumburg is maturing as a community, and there's nothing wrong with Schaumburg. It's nice people there. Yeah, no, um, good place. But, um, that's, look, why, that's why we're in Lake Forest. 
<laughs> Lake Forest has traditions and Lake Forest has a great history, but that doesn't mean you save every single structure. I mean, some of these structures are beyond their, oh, yeah. their life use. They, for whatever reason, they weren't maintained and stuff. And I get in the cost and the whole thing, taking it back to the central business district and the whole block the box campaign uh, that, you know, and, and uh Drew Beidler embraced that or tried to uh, get those votes, at least um, when she was running against Randy Tack. Uh, you know, they, it's really kind of short sighted. If you if you just leave everything exactly the way it is, the community's the area is going to fall apart eventually. Yeah, you, you have you to have, have a balance. Buildings. You have to have new buildings. But there, there's also no reason why uh, new buildings can't be. Uh, well, as I said, uh, compatible with what's there now. Sure. Uh, Look, market yeah, that was, the, that was the problem with Block the Box. That was right. the complaint against Block the Box was that uh, rather than a single family home, uh, it was a, I think, a three story. And I, and I never really got into all the details of it, but it was a three story um, building that was built out to the lot lines uh, and thus was uh, uh, not compatible with the area around it. The uh, developers are very good people. Uh, they're uh, local respected developers who've done a good job on other projects. Um, how it's going to work out, I, I hope it will work out well and everybody will end up being satisfied with it. You yeah. had three no, but that's, th this is This is the problem you run into. I'm trying to figure out what the problem is. What was there before was three crappy office uh, buildings, office buildings. Dennis, you know, was there. You had some dumpsters and some blank land, and now you got a pretty decent looking uh, uh, complex there. And I I'm trying to figure out how that doesn't fit in. I understand the crap hit the fan when Mr. T started cutting out some, uh, what's that called? Brush thorn? Thorn brush or buckthorn. whatever? Buckthorn. Buckthorn. Oh, yeah. the problem is he wasn't cutting out buckthorn. He was cutting out, uh, I think. He cut out the street. Oh, he stuck on Green Bay Road. Buckthorn. Yes. Yeah, it started with buckthorn, and a lot of people are getting crap for cutting out buckthorn, even though it's an invasive uh, species. So I hear. Yeah, I mean, and, my point and, and, and buckthorn is is, a, is obviously a, an issue here. Uh, a large, uh, a good majority of the tree canopy is actually buckthorn. Case in point, counselor. Yes, but it's nice that Joe, you could hear from Kathy Zerniak on that on that stuff every time I've tried to call her she always picks up the phone seems like a straight up person and she didn't tell me this but i'm kind of guessing it she can't come on the phone and and, and talk to people about about this stuff she well you can only go on a, a bus tour and, <laughs> and hear from her well i highly you recommend the forest 101 and i think she's very accessible to residents when they have development issues whether it's you know mm -hmm. yes. uh, additions to your house or w all that types of stuff um you know in terms of the public facing um the, the city like many units of government these days has made a decision that employees don't talk to the press don't talk to podcasts like this um and it either goes through Ooh. the manager or the spokesman or or whatever and so you know, okay. I, I have a friend that's a reporter in central Illinois, and he used to be able to walk into City Hall in the in the in the cities that he'd cover and just go in and talk to the public works director or the police chief or whoever about whatever story he was working on. And then one day they're like, oh, you got to see so and so. She's the uh, sp official spokesperson now for the city. So, you know, everything is 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 regulated that way. I get it. I've, yeah. I've, I've been I've been a government employee. I don't talk about my work um, to, the, to the media. I follow the, the protocols that I'm directed to do, you know, and a lot of it is there's this whole thing called message discipline. They're worried about a yeah. random employee say, saying something that they don't want said. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, we got we got an attorney here on the podcast. Yeah, they're trying they're trying to uh, they're, they're, they're trying to uh, to uh, guide the message uh, and stay on what they cancel? want. So to that let said, I get that. I, I, I can appreciate that you don't want uh, frontline employees um, talking to the media or to a podcast like this. Getting told. What about a, what, 
But there needs to be okay. someone who can. There needs to be a spokesperson who can. Yeah. And I, and I as a former elected official, 12 years. Um, if District you, 219. 219 and, and Village of Morton Grove. Um, Village of Morton Grove. I if if I wish there had been podcasts like this back when I was an elected official because I would have come on any chance you'd ask me. Um, yeah. because well, I, well, Joe, I, because I want to get my message out. I'm yeah, accountable. Well, Joe, this is a this is a media. We are the I'm only accountable. Accountable media for this stuff. Which, which I felt is, I felt really? I'm okay. accountable to the community. I I I didn't follow the prescription of no. I'm not. I mean, there were if now if there was pending hey, hey, if there was pending litigation, I wouldn't comment on pending litigation. I get that, and there's certain confidential things like personnel matters and things that you can't publicly discuss. Those are specifically laid were, out. Were, were you an elected official? Me? Yeah. Yeah, three no. times. I won okay. three elections. All right. The aldermen, they're elected officials, right? Yeah. Yeah, the aldermen okay. can certainly come on. If any alder, they, they're not going to tell aldermen they can't come on. Oh, oh, I know they did. Jay, hey, Jason, I know you told the aldermen not to come on, and and they say, well, we want the mayor to do the speaking, but the mayor won't come on. Now, I've been. This is George Pandaleon. We're letting Randy Tack come into place, but I'm just wondering why Jason, who I like, who seems like a transparent guy, it seems to me that this is. How, alleged hypothetical but i've been told on this podcast that i'm 90 percent right so i'm going to take the odds on this one somebody calls jason to say hey you can't have those people on the podcast they can't talk about that that's cancellation okay you can't do that you make you make the 20 percent happy and the other 80 percent think there's some conspiracy going on yeah, I, I look. He can certainly look, and I I, re, I I respect Jason. I think he does great work for the city. Yeah, I do. Too. Um, I think the city. I think the city is extremely well run, uh, and he does a great job. I've watched him in these Lake Forest one hundred and one sessions. He wasn't at the bus tour, but he was at the other sessions. Um, does a great job, and that's not easy. That's a, running the city is a lot of work. I totally appreciate yeah. that. You got to bring your A game every day for Lake Forest. Yeah. So um, he does that. And I, uh, my hat's off to him on that. And like I said, I, I totally get keeping the employees from speaking um, because you want, yeah. you want that. But policymakers, elected officials, um, you can advise them. That's fine. And he, they should advise them on things because we don't want political hacks like in Chicago and stuff making crazy decisions. Um, you want advice from professionals. But I, I, and he can advise, hey, maybe don't talk about this thing because it's in litigation or don't talk about this because it's a personnel matter. That's fair. But in terms of the general public policy and the direction, you know, ultimately, these guys aren't accountable to any staff members. They're accountable to the voters. And yeah. that's how I felt it when I any time a reporter came up to me and we had more reporters back then. The demise of local of the local press is a real tragedy in democracy today. I mean, look, the Tribune, the Chicago Tribune can barely function now um, compared to the way the Tribune used to be. So take that down now to the local levels. You got one reporter covering the whole North Shore instead of years ago. They had a reporter on all these different beats. Um, so but no. I think it's but, no. Pete, but Pete, my point here is that. Um, yeah, whether, what is the point? whether it's reporters or 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 the general public, I would urge anyone that's an elected official, an alderman, a school board member, um, talk talk to your voters. And this is a way to talk to your voters. You're you ultimately you're going to be on the ballot. This is a great way for people to know you and know where you stand. And this is this is a great tool. Thousands of people watch this podcast every week. So don't cut so, off your, what, spite your face. I get it. There's certain things you can't talk about, but, but don't talk about them. Yeah, just say, no look, comment. that subject is off limits because of X, of X, Y, or Z. Yeah, but let's talk public policy. Because yeah, I mean, I'd, like I'd like to hear, I'd like to hear how the school board members came to the public decision of giving somebody a raise, like they did um, right after a tax increase. <laughs> I'd like to hear where you know. And again, I, I think the city is extremely well run. 
I think it's a great thing. So I think they can come on and be a very positive experience and talk about all the great things that the city of Lake Forest is doing. I mean, you, Joe, do you ever think you, that maybe? Do you ever think that maybe these guys the uh, like the fact that there is no media anymore? Maybe this is actually yeah, of course. Advantage. You know, it's funny you say that, Rick, because back when I was on the board in in two nineteen, we used to have like five reporters. We had like Pioneer yeah. Press. We had oh, yeah, learned, yeah. we had the, we had the we learner had newspaper. We had the journal and topics. We had, and our board meetings were pretty heated back in in the in the eighties uh, and nineties. I was in, on in the nineties. Um, we had a couple of strikes and stuff. So a lot of tension, 219 got a lot up more press than a lot of other school boards in the area. Um, and, uh, you know, they, uh, one of the newspapers back then, I think went under Learner Life and we were all kind of joking, well, that's one less reporter to bug us. But, yeah. you know, I, I think it's bad. I, I really think it's, it may be nice in the short run that, oh, I'm not as accountable, but, you know, the problem is less and less people are caring about local government. People are, are I, I happen to spend some time with some relatives uh, over the holiday weekend, and they're, they're talking about national stuff and things they hear on national cable and, and national stuff. And they had no idea what's going on in their own community. They had no idea what's going on in their own backyard. They're more interested in what the latest thing is in Washington or national. Joe, Joe look, look. The Lake County people, they have no problems coming on. Meta Metawa has no problem coming on. Okay. <laughs> I don't even know why I'm bothering to stick with Lake Forest. If we, you know, it, it, the, the transparency piece, like, well, there's Chicago's nothing to hide. No well, look, I think, I think the mayoral election showed, look, Randy Tack came on the podcast. Prue Beidler did not. How did that work out for Prue? Yeah. I agree. I think I, I seriously. She, she, I mean, look. She, I think she, she passed up a chance to get election. voters who were otherwise against her. But she right. may have. I think Crew lost persuaded. a lot of votes. I can't tell you if that would, is what ultimately. I mean, there's a lot of things that I think cost her the election. No offense to her, uh, but I think I think that her failure. She tried to control. She tried to over control her campaign. Make it very formula. At all these internet ads and stuff, mm -hmm. um, direct mail pieces. Very um, much out in the box. Controlled kind of meetings. You know, yeah. come to my open house where only I will screen Joe, questions. And, and that one debate, which was really screened. But my point here, Pete, is it, it, if she had if she had chosen to come on, I think people would have seen her in a different light. And I think Randy Tack choosing to come on helped his campaign because people, I, oh, here's a guy that's willing to answer questions. Look, we're, we're, we keep kicking this dead horse. This dead horse is dead. The two things that I'm, here's what I'm, because the what I've seen in my experience of doing this, okay, look, politics are involved. Uh, I think that whoever's leading the government is trying to ride the middle, okay? The left, the conservatives, the outliers on that side. What This is Pete Jansen saying this, because I've witnessed it. Somebody makes a call to someone, and then it's silence. Nothing happens, number one. Number two, if you talk about, let's just say, uh, the schools, if you don't talk a certain way about the schools, you are suddenly no longer on a podcast anymore, hypothetically, allegedly, okay? So they're, they are grasping at straws to try to control what truth is going out there. Look, I don't watch the news. I want to create the news, meaning that this is what I see. This is my opinion. Somebody sees something different. Come on the show and tell us. All of us have met people in the public, and they say, hey, you know what? I didn't know about that till I heard it from you guys. So if they don't hear it from us, then who are they going to hear it from? The the uh, the communications person about the schools, Melissa Oakley, who oh my God, that that data breach we haven't even talked about yet. All right, well, or, we, we, we've got the data breach is a great example. Let's go to that because yeah. this was. This was something that went out there. A lot of people were in, were directly affected by it and saw it, and yet I'm hearing nothing about it. Why is that? Well, it, because they're hoping that we stop talking about it. Because there's well, no, local, the because there's there's no local newspaper it. to cover it. If that had happened when I was on the District 219 school board with four newspapers in town, I think five at one point, 
one of those reporters, somebody would have dropped a dime to one of those reporters and that reporter would have tried to beat the, his because they were they were competitive. We had one guy like he would sneak into the back hallway to listen to executive sessions during labor contract negotiations so he could get a scoop for a story. That's how aggressive the journalism was back then. Um, this would have been all over the local press if this had happened, if this data breach had happened um, um, they have, with a they have robot succeeded. local journalism. Uh, yeah. They have succeeded in keeping this under the rug, even though it was quite vocal, quite public. And, and maybe but there's they, a good, maybe there's a decent Nobody's talking explanation. about it. Nobody, nobody knows about it. Maybe they have a good ex this is the part that gets me is whether it's this thing or the, the salary increases that Montgomery did after the tax hike referendum passed. Oh, maybe God. they have, but here, listen, maybe they have an explanation, you know, and I've talked to a couple people that know Matt Montgomery. They say he's a decent guy. I've never met him. Um, exactly. But, but my, come on and tell your side. We're very friendly. We don't, we will let you. I'm tell not even well, better, you, you we're think, all remote. I think they, I mean, we're here. <laughs> let, let me make friendly. sure. Screw me once. Screw me we're going to, we're going to talk about this subject, whether you come on or not. So if I were you, I'd come on and at least get my side in because otherwise we're going to talk about it and your side's not going to come out on this. And you know what? Maybe they can get their own podcast going because I don't want to <laughs> talk to those people. Well, I, I think, look, I do. I, I would like to have Matt Montgomery on and yeah, have a I conversation. I, I and and I think this him. whole, you, you talked a minute about this canceling people, this whole cancel culture. Yeah. And yeah, oh, I'm, I'm canceling you had, them. Look, you, people will say, oh my God, he had Jeff Brincat and Frank McCormick on. So I, I don't want anything to do with that. It's like, okay, I don't yeah. agree with, I don't agree with everything Parents Care stands for. I'm a fiscal conservative. I'm not a social conservative. They've been very clear on that. Um, so some of the stuff that they've talked about on social issues, I don't agree with. Okay. So, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to talk to them. That means I'm not going to come on and give my side. I mean, you remember the the show I used to love and he just passed away a couple of years ago, Larry King Live on, on CNN. Yeah. He'd yeah. have everybody on. He'd have the right wingers, the left wingers, the centrists. You have Don Rickles on, you know. I mean, he had Eddie, anybody, Stern, and Dave Embry on, yeah. You know, and 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 he and he played he played fair, and he and you if you got on Larry King's show, you got your points across, whether you were a right wing conservative or a left wing liberal, um, and and that's that's what I think you can do here, and you have done. I mean, Matt Montgomery did come on the podcast when he yeah, wanted when he needed something. Yeah, yeah. You when know, he wanted to sell so, the. Uh, so so the here's referendum. the difference: Matt Montgomery came on the podcast, and his referendum, the district referendum, passed. Yeah. Kurt Weidler did not come on the podcast, mm -hmm. and she lost. Coincidence? Well, I think not. <laughs> getting, getting back to Kathy Zerniak, we want to give her props because. Look, we all know she gets a lot of crap because she's got to toe the line on what you can and can't do, right, in the, in the building stuff. That's the perception. And I know it's not like that. I, I, it is, but it isn't. And she's a cool chick. I want to have her come on. Hey, talk about it. I want the sanitation guys to come on. Hey, tell me about the, how many stickers you got to put on those damn cans because we don't throw the right stuff in the recycling. Let's talk about that, right? Oh no! We yeah, let's talk Jason? about the dump. That's a great. That's that is the dump would be topic. a great show. I think, I will I think tell the you, dump the, would be the, the most watched yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, people are passionate about the dump. I will tell you, Lake Bluff has a much better dump than Lake Forest. I I, I recently had an occasion I'm, I'm to try kidding. to take stuff to the Lake Forest dump. You can only make one <laughs> trip a day. One yeah, but Lake Forest is run by, you know, I will say this because I, I used to, when I was a trustee back in the day, I was, I was on the, I was the representative for Morton Grove on the, on the Swank board, so, Solid Waste Swank. Agency of Northern Cook County. Okay. Yeah. So no, Lake County I, is Swalco. Yes. Yeah. So Swank and Swalco. Um, and so I learned more about trash and garbage and recycling than I cared to, uh, to know, <laughs> but I learned what I learned in that was about the do's and don'ts of recycling and how if you do the recycling the right way, it actually saves the community money. The, you know, we can all debate the environmental benefits of it. Some people say it helps the environment. Some people say it doesn't. But 
the fact is if you recycle the right way, you get the cans in and, and stuff, especially because that generates revenue and reduces landfill costs. Forget the environmental issues of landfills. It reduces costs. It actually, and that's where I think Lake Forest, because Lake Forest tends to have a business approach. I, I, can't, I can't speak to Lake Bluff. Um, but Lake Forest is run by business people. Essentially, you've got you know you got a mayor who was yes he's a doctor, but he was the uh, uh, the head of Illinois Bone and Joint Institute or managing partner of it, so he's got a business sense. Um, we've always had business people very heavily involved in this community, so they look at it as this is not just an environmental do good thing, but it's also a, a smart business move if we do it the right way. And they did that whole Bart the cart thing and stuff to educate of what to recycle, what not, because it costs money if you throw stuff in that shouldn't be recycled. Um, so they, I, I yes. can't speak to, and, and I, I come yes. from a place that didn't have any dump. So I was just excited that I could just take my garbage on Saturdays or Sundays in the summer. Um, oh, the, the Lake Bluff dump is, is like this. a social activity. I mean, well, let's are, go. You know, let's guys go are hanging out, that's where the guys are hanging out on a Saturday morning. They're oftentimes the people, they're not playing golf. That's where they are, is at the dump. I think we've, we've one trip a day, one trip a, a day, no, one, one trip a day. I mean, like for, for if, car, if, if for you're car. trying to get things out, you know, one trip a day is, is, is not sufficient. Well, uh, I got four as cars. Well as it's not open. Hold on, hold on. The other, the Lake Bluff dump I have is four drivers. Seven so I got four cars, Rick. That's what, you know, my, my Audi a seven, my, my, I can't really call a lot of trash in the a seven. It's just not well designed <laughs> for that. Purpose. Or should you? This wasted energy that I have, guys, is, hey, Jason, I'm talking to you. Things are happening. They're trying to control what you say and don't say. You're being canceled. And in doing so, you're not being transparent. Look, if we can get everybody else to come on the show, you know, why why can't you? If you don't want to come on, then stop telling other people not to come on. You're not like that. You're trying to be impartial. Pete, let me, let me, let me, let me address that. Let's address the elephant in the room, pun intended. Yeah. People think this is a politically biased podcast. They think because of how we took on Prue and we took on uh, Susan Garrett, who's a former Democratic state yeah, legislator, but, that we're biased. But we've had Democrats on. And we, oh, Susan ones. Garrett yeah. is still welcome to come on this podcast. No, by all means. It doesn't matter. They don't care. You had Anthony the Vega on. We had Leon Rockingham, yeah. who's a Democrat, mayor of oh, North yeah. Chicago. Yes. Yeah, well, and I think yeah, you're going to have an. I, I won't spoil I think, well, your we'll surprise have an, guest uh, in a couple yeah. weeks, but we're going to have a big name Democrat in a couple weeks here. Yes, so I'm like, going to get him. You can tell, and you can tell her I'm, I'm going to get up early in the morning out in Arizona so that I can be on that one. Yeah, well, let's keep the name secret so that they don't get to her and tell her not to come on. We just we well, just got a preview. Well, it. We, we big kinda, name. You know, let's put a little taste it's out a there. Big name. It, big name. Look, I mean, it, it, any, like I said, think of this as like Larry King Live for Lake Forest. All right. Anybody I'm, can I, I, it makes me think something's going on. Okay. So what I'm thinking is going on is uh, I could look at Jason's uh, voting record in the primaries and see that he's a Democrat the last few times, which is true. Maybe he's got friends and that's why he's trying to control the message. That's Pete Jansen talking. Okay. Jason, I know that's not the case, but come on here and, and, and change my mind. Okay. Number two, the schools. It's amazing how we don't have a co-host on here anymore. The listeners and viewers can connect the dots. After that uh, breach of the school and us talking about the schools more, there's a reason why there's different co-hosts on the show. So that when people don't come on and they're not transparent and they're not straight up, this is what happens. And that's how I address it. That's not how Joe addresses it or Rick addresses it, but that's how Pete Jansen's addresses it. Oh, oh, oh Pete, I've been told by people I shouldn't be on here, too. Uh, yeah. Uh, th that's, yeah. And yes, it is cancel culture, in my view. Um, you know, you, if you don't like what we say, okay, don't listen to us. You know. Yeah, I think can cancel yeah. culture is a horrible, horrible thing. I mean, we've all, I mean, um, you know, I, my couple, during the- It's a horrible thing. It's a, Joe, it's a horrible thing if you don't got stones. I right. got stones, you got stones, Rick's got stones. So unless you push back, you allow these idiots to do what they're trying to do. But here's what I don't understand. Why is it that people think because you talk to parents care or whoever it may be, that therefore they can't they shouldn't come on and give well, their you know, perspective. We maybe want this everyone is the result of the, the Fox News CNN uh dichotomy. Yeah. Where you know you you only talk to your echo chamber, 
Yeah. This is, if and you're that's, on that's Fox News, said. you must yeah. be a conservative. If you're on CNN, you must be a liberal. Yeah. Uh, and and that, this you may be, be really a symptom of that. <laughs> No. Is, I, I always thought it was a horrible thing for the country. You uh, know, I, I, I completely agree. I, I Like I said, I keep going back to the Larry King Live analogy. It's kind of weird. But I don't think a show like that would – either a show like that wouldn't be on today or it would be a huge hit because people would love to get back to that. I think there's a huge center in this country that's being lost. Um, I think the yeah. Democratic Party has moved too far to the left. The Republican Party has moved too far yeah. to the right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, absolutely. And they used to fight for the center. It used right. to be the, yeah. the closer you get to the center, the better your chances were for winning. Right. Uh, and, and, I, I and, think, and George Wallace, people like that complained that you couldn't put a thin dime between the Democrat and Republican Party. Well, that's because they rejected George Wallace and his and his views. And instead, they were going for where the center of the country was. Which, is, which was a healthy thing at the time. And now we have this divergence where we have yeah. very left wing and very right wing and all too little in between. And that's Although why I, I, I really wish, are still in I really, I really would love to have um, people who snip at you off either on social media or in the privacy of their houses. Come on. Let's talk. They're, they're not well, Senator they're Garrett. I would love players. to. I would love to talk with Senator Garrett about a whole bunch of things and have it and have well, a respectful conversation. I would love. I wish we could have two of them. But Prue could still come on. Talk about what your mayoral. Yeah. I mean, unless Prue can, unless Prue can get something out of it, she ain't going to come on. We're, you know what? The I think she would get something out of it. Only... She'd get respect from me. <laughs> well that'd be a long that's, show that's, you can check that off of her life's goals uh, the bucket list <laughs> but here, from know, a guy she didn't know who the hell was and came yeah. out and bad mouthed her so the, so, the, so the point is we're hey montgomery hey jason hey whoever the mayor is we're everybody's friend when you need something but when when you get what you need it's like bye bye hey if lake forest won't come on lake county will Highwood will come on. Matawa will come on. So Jason, uh, Lina, the principal, uh, Montgomery, the superintendent, keep doing what you're doing. Super Montgomery, I give him what two years tops that he's going to be around till he goes. Well, to, what I want to really hear place. from, I, I don't want to hear from the superintendent as much as I want to hear from the elected school board members. Yeah, I don't. Who I actually want to hear from too. Yeah, right. I don't want to. I don't elect a superintendent. Yeah. I elect school board yeah. members. I vote for school board yeah. members. You want my vote? Talk to me. Talk to us. Yeah. Talk to the community. Thousands, thousands of voters are watching this. Yeah. Oh, well, you know what? I will tell you, the, the problem was we, we did have a contested school board election a couple of years ago. Uh, and the, uh, the current Everything's won. Everything's contested. Uh, and the, um, uh, they won by a fair amount. Uh, and the result has been they don't feel that they have any need to answer to the voters because the voters, frankly, aren't paying any attention, which is very sad, but unfortunately, I think true. Well, uh, you know, we have in Illinois so many elected officials, so many different governments that the result is no, an average citizen doesn't even try to pay attention. Well, yeah, we have. Um, you think you have here's, problems here's with the school board? On that. Listen, One out I gotta of deal every. With, I got to deal with the judiciary. Okay. You know, the, the same voters who know nothing about who they are voting for, they select the judges and they are doing a yeah. terrible job of it. And we are now we are now suffering from that. I will tell you in Lake County that we have had a lot of uh, we have had a lot of turnover in, in the judiciary and it has not been for the better. Uh, our, our appointed judges, there's two kinds of judges. There's associate judges who are appointed. There are circuit judges who are elected and the circuit judges then appoint the associate judges. You would think that the circuit judges who are elected and are, are paid more and, and have more uh, security would be the better judges. Yeah. They were, but they are no longer are. Uh, and this is an issue that we have uh, have to deal with in Lake County. Because the problem is the yeah. voters don't know what's going on and they don't care. They're not paying attention. This is Well, a if, if Rick, if, if Lake Forest people won't come on, then we have to make our own assumptions and uh, allegedly's and hypotheticals and all that. So I'm done playing the games with these people. I'm going to, 
uh, you know how I'm going to get my news through the FOIAs. And you know what? I'm going to get really good at narrowing down on the FOIAs, and that's what I'm going to talk about here. Then we'll see if anybody, uh, you know, comes on the show. And until then, if if somebody doesn't come on to me, they're hiding something. So that that's unfortunate. Mm-hmm. And I think it's really uh, it's, it's also unfortunate is if someone doesn't come on because someone else was on and said something they don't agree with. That's yeah. that's really you know and and or calling somebody and saying don't go on that show because they had and it's a it's a liberal so calling it. It's a liberal calling another that's, liberal. That that's what's happening. That's just yeah. that's cancel culture on steroids. Yes, it is. That is what we're talking about here. Well, that's we're what's here. happening. Once again, it's we're, you know we're gonna allow conservatives can only talk to conservatives. Uh, liberals can only talk to liberals. Yeah. Anybody so, can come on. We'll hear them out. We'll hear them out. We hey, had Joe, Anthony, Anthony Vega and Leon Rockingham were on. Well, even better. Who did we screw over on this show that came on? Who did we like disrespect? Anybody? No, nobody no. that I've seen. But at, but at the end of the day, people want to hear the truth. They don't want to hear Dan Dorfman. They don't want to hear Jonah Meadows, the marketing pieces uh, for the city, right? Melissa Oakley, okay, great. You get your one side out there, so you guys get your votes and your money. Okay, till then, there's us, the Down and Dirty Podcast. And if you don't like what we're saying, we're wrong, then please come on board. You don't right? have to listen to us. Don't. Somebody else will. Somebody else will. <laughs> Somebody else will. <laughs> John Rick, man, thanks for dealing with these uh, less than ideal circumstances. But look, at the end of the day, the show must go on. We got our listeners and viewers out there, and it's a slow time. And if it's a slow time, Jason, superintendent, past mayors, caucus people, School board members, any board members, reflect and think, what what are you benefiting by not coming on, by not telling the truth? All right, guys, take care. The Lake Forest Podcast is supported by viewers, listeners, and businesses just like you. Looking for the best pool supplies? Look no further than Doheny's Pool Supplies. With a history dating back to 1967, this family-owned business offers everything families need to keep their pools clean and sparkling from chemicals to equipment. Plus, customers enjoy free shipping on all orders. Visit Doheny's Pool Supplies today at doheny.com, D-O-H-E-N-Y.com to learn more. Forest Bluff Real Estate Team serves Illinois, Wisconsin, Lake Forest, and Lake Bluff. John Josephitis, Laura Lee Van Fleet, and of course, Michelle Parnell. Get a free market analysis now at forestbluffrealestate.com. For the best cannabis in the world, look no further than Iliad Epic Grow. Owned by Lake Bluff's own Rich Ruzich, they are a cannabis cultivation center focusing on hard-to-find small batch products that will delight both the occasional user and Ganjier. When visiting Michigan, ask for it by name, Epic Products, Exceptional Process. For more information, email info at iliadgrow.com. Havy Communications has been helping first responders arrive safely since 1983. It's owned by Lake Forest own Mike Havy. Check them out at havycommunications.com. We'd also like to say we're thankful for our Patreon supporters. Matt A, Elizabeth C, Costa, Lance, Otto, RDM, John C, and Helen. Shout out to the Lake Forest Breakfast Group, Rod Stop and Captain Mike's in Kenosha, the Greentown Tavern, and the Frolic Lounge in Waukegan.